Hello, everybody. Mike from Southern California again. It's Wednesday, March the 4th, 2020, and you're on the mic. So, as first reported, of course, by SG Sammy, I've also seen um, Come Geek some report on this as well. Um, it's come, of course, to all of our attention that um, a Deviant Art user by the name of Hammer the Tank put out a list the other day. Um, of all the Kick Vic voice actors, or okay, of all the all those involved with Kick Vic that we know of, from um, the people who started the whole hashtag to to vo the voice actors involved to to the cosplayers to media, law, Twitter, all that. Um, I reviewed I reviewed the list myself. Um. I want to give my thoughts on it because you know I, I and I'd have to kind of agree with with come geeks him on this one where it may not have been the best idea to do to just put the list up you know um, of course they're they're accusing that guy and anybody who who doesn't call him out for it of of doxing when of course as Sammy pointed out Hey, they did. They did a list on on the I stand with Vic side too. Put out a quote unquote hit list. So, um, but even even the person who put this up though had even said, you know, this isn't meant to. This is not meant to encourage people to go out and harassing them. And we should not be. We should not be doing that. We should not be harassing these people. If anything, the best thing we can do is just ignore them because eventually they're going to get tired. But um, but I wanted to talk about it because I review I reviewed the list myself. Um, at least when it comes to the VAs, I'm not gonna name the exact specific ones, but some of the names that they put on there I don't believe are kick them. And I've said this before. I'm not gonna now this time around. I've mentioned some of the people before that I that I don't think are. Kick big. I'm not gonna say them again, and I'm I'm gonna explain why here. I know some people will think somebody might be kick Vic because they remain they remain friendly towards um, those who we know are kick Vic. Okay, like we can I think everybody knows for certain. Like certain. Certain people are kicked back. I think we all would know and agree, like Monica Real, you know, among the voice actors and actresses. Okay, we know that Monica Real is kicked back. We know Jamie Markey is kicked back. We know Chris Sabat, Sean Schemmel. We know a number of these people are kicked back. Now, so those we don't necessarily have to worry about, like mentioning that because you know we, we we know everybody knows it's not it's not some big secret but i did notice there were some names on there that this person felt were kick vic based on some other other aspects now granted for the most part i agree i agree with the majority of the list so don't get me wrong the majority of the people on that list because I've done my own research on some of these people too, and I would agree that with the majority of them, they are kick Vic. But there are a few on there that um, that were put on there because maybe more tangible interaction. It's like there are some people on there who you know, who were put on there, and based on my research, first off, none of them had ever tweeted or liked anything regarding um, Kick Vic, okay? There, there are a few people um, who did. Now, we, now, I've helped confirm some people who, who are Kick Vic, but there were, there were a small handful of them that there's been no evidence to suggest, at least from what I've seen, my research, they're not kick Vic. I don't want to. I don't want to go into the specifics in terms of 
who's who I'm specifically am talking about only because there's a reason why um, there's one of, one of the things you have to take into consideration, you know, in a evalu- in evaluating all this, right? When I did my research, as 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 I did my research and as I um, looked into it a bit, looked into who who possibly was kick who was possibly kick Vic, who wasn't. Now a lot of them, yes, are from Funimation. Okay, but I would say that there are four benchmarks to look at. Four bu- benchmarks as to whether they tweeted, retweeted. Or like any of these situations, you know, well, three of them are basically, um, three of them are basically tweets and another one is, um, is another situation and all. Well, okay. So, these are the four benchmarks I think we need to look at. Monica's statement last year on February 7th. When she said, it happened to me. He happened, to, I believe the it happened to me statement she made. She, that tweet was made on February the 7th, I believe, of last year. That's the first benchmark. The second benchmark is Kamehakan. Okay. The third benchmark is the tweet, re- tweet retweet regarding the September 6th dismissal ruling. And the last benchmark is the October 4th dismissal ruling. So those are the four benchmarks that you have to look at. Okay. I looked into those. I looked, you know, now, granted, there are some people who are on KickVic who may may not have been, but have said other things that would indicate as well. So don't get me wrong here. But those are the four main benchmarks that you really have to look at. Okay. Um, first off, let's let's make it clear. Not every not every voice actor who has ever worked for Funimation is KickVic. We know this for a fact. We know. Obviously, Vic is not Kick Vic. Okay, Todd's not Kick Vic. Chuck Huber's not Kick Vic. Okay, and I think there are a few others. I'm just, I'm not, I don't want to say any more names or anybody that I believe is either not Kick Vic or neutral or I stand with Vic because, because well, I'll, ex- and I'll explain a little bit. You know, part of it is obviously for those who are trying to make, Main, who are trying to maintain neutrality, or um, or who may be supporting Vic, they're in a very difficult position. Okay, so even if some of the people on the list there were tangent in terms of tangential tangential interactions with uh, with those who are more solidly kick Vic, you know. They have to be because these are people they have to work with, right? You know, these are people they have to work with, you know, and they may they may be neutral or or maybe they some of them even do actually support Vic, but can't really say it too openly because you know because if they do, they might get threatened with losing work or having their reputations damaged. One of the key reasons why Vic really needs to win in court to, to curb this behavior, to curb this name and shame behavior. Okay, but um, without speaking specifically to some some of the some of the things, um, first off, I think some of the people on that list at at different levels may have been coerced. Coerced either into not saying anything, or maybe even even some of those that are on the list who have said something, but I don't think that them saying you know we do have a case where there's a you know 
suspected case of at least one of the VAs who who was involved in a particular project um, in regards to this may have been coerced into doing it. May have been coerced into doing it. Threatened maybe with uh, with not getting work or or what have you. Okay, some of you probably may know what I'm talking about. As I said, I don't want to specific. I don't want to go. I don't want to really specifically name people because what would end up happening is if I start naming people, then there's going to be a lot of heat put on them that doesn't really need to be, you know. Especially with what we just saw with Vic and talking about, you know, on his mo most recent unlocked, in which he talked about, um, in which he talked about how. How people are beginning against conventions. Okay, so um, so I don't want to bring any more heat to some of them who are actually just being neutral and trying to, um, trying to just go in and do their job. They don't want they don't want any of this drama. I'm sure there are even some of them who are actually upset about this drama who. Maybe even upset at those who are creating the drama, namely those who have been accusing Vic, those who have been stir continually stirring this pot, you know, just to keep all the angst going or whatever lame reason they have for it. You know, some people I believe were coerced. Maybe with a threat of, maybe they were put pressure on them to say, you know, to say things negatively against Vic because, you know, they were they were told, well, if you don't, then we just won't use you. You'll maybe you'll just be allowed to finish whatever roles you're currently working on, and we just won't use you anymore. That's a possibility. You know, um, another example I want to give again, not trying to go into two anything specific um but one of the other things when you're looking at workplace situations you have different different you know some workplace situations you have different levels of management you have low level man management which may be in charge of a specific department or or a specific task and you have others that are mid Mid management level and some who are even um, upper management level. You know, um, sometimes you may have a situation where, you know, somebody, where even even if a if whatever a low level manager, even if they've pretty much been given. What what is perceived as complete authority on a specific aspect or or project of a particular company. There are still times when upper management can come in and say, "No, we want you to do this," and there's always that possibility that they might even threaten, you know, if you don't do this, we'll just replace you with somebody who will. You know, I'm purposely being vague here because many of us do know of a situation like that. I don't want to specifically say what it is, but you might you might pick up on what I'm talking about. You know, um, you know, I know that there was a situation that a lot of people got who are probably upset at a particular individual because of what they did specifically to Vic in regards to um, in terms of a promotional thing. But, you know, based on my, my research I don't believe this person is actually kick Vic. They were just stuck in a very, 
very uncomfortable position for them being that they were probably considered low level management somebody maybe in authority over them forced them into doing something that maybe they otherwise would not have done you know um So I just think, you know, we talk a lot about context matters. And I know, you know, and what we have to also remember is there was probably a time when even Vic didn't know who was for him and who was against him. He probably had a lot of doubts about a lot of people too. But I think if you take a step back and you look at the things, um, a little more objectively, you'll find that maybe it's not as clear as you think. You know, um, person in particular I'm talking about, I did look into the situation, and I and based on the research I did, I do not believe they're kicked in. I believe there's. You know, there are some other things where, like, somebody else was mentioned in somebody's deposition. But based on my research, they were not kickback, even though they got listed as kickback. Because I go back to, in this situation, I go back to the idea is sometimes people have to be friendly with the enemy in order to just get along. In order to just, you know, be able to move just they just want to go in they just want to do their work they don't want the drama so they just try to not say anything to offend anybody right they may know what what people are doing to Vic is wrong but to come out and call those doing those wrongs to him could be very costly for them and I think it's something for people to take into consideration. Um, you know, you have to take that into consideration as you're evaluating it. There are others on the list that, based on the research I'd done, I hadn't seen any evidence that they've actually liked treated or retweeted anything in regards to the four benchmarks I had mentioned. Now there's a couple of people people have thought over the time over the months or whatever might be kick Vic, but there's no way to prove it because there's at least a couple of people on that on that list that I that I feel don't necessarily have a social media parent. Like they don't have a Twitter account or a Facebook account. So you can't really go in and see if they've actually have said anything. Now, also, mind you, there may be people that even if they haven't said anything publicly or even liked or retweeted, there's other things, other clues you can find in that that might show that they might have leanings towards, you know, the SJW mindset or kick Vic. You know, that you should also look at. If you see that one of one of the voice actors that you that you may know. Let's say they don't let's say that now okay, mainstream media as a whole, you look at Hollywood, you look you can even see it in the in the voice actor community, right? You know? The majority of them don't like Trump. The majority of them are of that mindset, orange man bad. Of course, I think most of us know this. So when evaluating certain things, they're, they're of the, you know, now a lot of these people, particularly the ones who are real vocal against Trump, you know, have that SJW mindset. They don't necessarily, they don't believe, they, they based in the back of their minds, don't believe in the American Constitution. They don't believe in law and order. They don't believe in due process what they believe in is mob mentality and mafia tactics you know that's why vic winning winning the case ultimately is important 
you know, many times we've heard them say, you know, we, we tell them, well, if all this happened, why didn't you go to the police? Because they believe that, that the police won't do anything. They don't believe in due process. They don't believe in law and order. They don't believe in the Constitution. And so many of these people, many of these, you know, entertainers, you look on their Twitter and they spend a good part of the day bashing Trump. There's at least a pretty reasonable inference there that they're probably like they're probably of the SJW mindset, maybe by extension, are kick Vic. Even if they haven't. And aside from the people who are on the list, there are some, there are some omissions on that list too. There's some people that I have found that have actually now granted there was one one person, one you know, one person who there were a number of people who I know had liked um, Monica's original tweet, tweet about um, about it happened to her. There were a number of of individuals who came out and supported that. Now, granted, a lot of them haven't said anything since specifically to that, but some of them, as you look through their as you look through their um, tweets and stuff, you can tell they are of the SJW mindset. You know, they are of that value system. So, um, so yeah, so basically though, I just want to get that, a lot of that off my chest. Just when you're evaluating this stuff, when you're evaluating, you know, you got to look to see, okay, what benchmarks I, as I said, I didn't necessarily want to specifically mention the specific people that I feel, based on my research, I feel are not kick Vic. Because if I do, if I give too much information and people figure out who these people are, they might start getting pressure again. And, you know, um, and I don't think that they need or deserve that pressure. As I said, these lists should not be used as target list or hit list or anything like that you shouldn't use it to i mean and and there are also there are also ways you know if you want to do something but but you want to avoid doing anything like illegal or harmful there are other ways to to get at these people one way is to just not give them any attention to begin with you know which is going to lead to the title of this particular video proactive for the good Okay, I've said this before, and I know Hiro Hay said it a time or two, and I know a few others have kind of pointed it out or have kind of like with their own coverage, like Yellow Flash and, and Tug have even gone away from it. You know, the nine, the nine hundred eighty-seven. Billion, uh, no, wait, 987 billion. Oh, wait, wait, no. The 9 billion 876 million 543,000 and 210th time a kick vicar has accused a Vic of being, being, a, being whatever you want to call him. Some form of monster, you know, um, and trying to convince you why he is is not newsworthy. We know this. We know they don't. We know for whatever reason they don't like Vic. It's not for the reason that they're saying either. I think we all know this by now. So covering every time one of them comes on to Twitter and tries to tell you why they why Vic is this monster it's just noise it's just noise I think after a while you just get a headache from it because it's stupid 
these people are clearly defaming him. You know that's what they're doing. And the more and the more we really the more we respond to it, the more credible we uh, the more reason we give them to keep keep it up. And sometimes the best thing is just to tune them out. Just completely tune them out. Like I I went as far as deactivating my own Twitter account. Just so I wouldn't get caught up in all that. Even Nick the other night was pointing out, Nick Riccata on the screen the other night was pointing out that we shouldn't even be trying to engage in law Twitter because part of the reason is, and I learned this the hard way too, is that because of their legal training, they are coming from a position, they're kind of coming from a position of authority. Even if they're wrong on the facts, they still know what they're talking about. You know, they may not know the facts of the case and why Nick is right and they're wrong. But they know enough about the, they know more about the law than any of us. <laughs> so we're not going to win that argument. It's it's a drain to even try. It's a waste of time. We should let the legal process play out. We should let the legal process play out and hope for the best. Okay? Because we're not going to beat these people going back and forth with them. Now, to my point, proactive for the good. Aside from just not giving the attention whores the attention they want, another way to do it is instead of focusing on their negativity, because even Vic has asked us to do this, to focus more on the positive. Focus more on the positive aspect. Instead of trying to demote the negative people, let's promote some positive people. There are a lot of voice actors out there who either aren't even involved in, in any of this garbage, don't get the recognition they deserve, or have been somewhat neutral or or um, supporting a Vic, who don't get invited to cons enough. I know there are a number of VAs that I've talked about on here that I would love to see having the chance to go to more cons. But because, you know, but because, of course, Funimation has kind of a monopoly, a lot of their, like a lot of the Funimation VAs and a lot of the LA VAs are the ones who end up going to most cons. Now, Vancouver, you know, Ocean Studios up in Vancouver, they, they, they get out to cons quite a bit, you know, not always anime cons, but, you know, other cons that they're involved with as well, um, because of other shows that they've done that they're pretty popular. But it would be nice to see some of those lesser known VAs meet, you know, if you've seen some of the, some of the works, like, that have been done, that have been dubbed by, like, Blue Water, like, Sentai, KDD Sentai, even the New York crew, you know, and some New Yorkers get out, too. I mean, you know, I'm sure many of you might want to meet some of them now, you know, or some of you may have already met them, would like to see them again. Best way to do that is to contact your local cons in, in, in a very polite and respectful manner Ask them to invite these voice the voice actors that you want to see more of. You know, you don't have to just let them continue to invite Funimation if you don't want to meet Funimation. But rather than just simply demoting or, or you know, demoting, you know, the Funimation views or the Kick Vic VAs, as I said, I'd rather put the spotlight on those who are more positive, those who I believe would really love the fanfare, who probably are just as, if not more deserving of the fanfare than the ones who are already going to the conventions. The idea of being positive, being proactive for the good. Vic has asked us all to do that. I have tried through my coverage to do that. You know, Promoting, you know, 
conventions as a whole, and for, particularly those who will stand with it, because as we saw even with KitchenerCon, they were under they were they were under an onslaught. They were under an onslaught because they invited Vic, and even me out here in California, I was I did some videos, you know, to help promote their cons. I think I did two or three videos in which I talked about them, and I continually encourage them to stay strong in this amidst this onslaught. You know, again, rather than even dignifying what what KV is trying to do, put your attention elsewhere. Put your, like, one example, I get, before I deactivated my Twitter account, right? I remember responding to this one Twitter user who who wanted to. She was asking how because she, she had always wanted to meet Kelly Sheridan. For those of you who don't know Kelly Sheridan, is she's a she's a VA from Vancouver. She's a, a VA a voice actress involved with with um, with Ocean Studios. Some of her more well known roles include Sango from Inuyasha. Um, Scarlet Witch from X Men Evolution. I know she's also been involved in the Barbie series, as well as um, you know My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. So you know, and I even commented back to it. Well, what you do is you need to, in a very polite and respectful manner, ask your local conventions to invite her. You don't have to just. You don't have to get in the mud with, with the KV VAs. You don't have to sludge around in the mud with them. You can you can go off and you can be with with the VAs who, who would really appreciate your your fanfare, would really appreciate your adoration. Unlike how a lot of these kick Vic voice actors and actresses have behaved. Ultimately, my message on this is this. Let's be positive. Let's be proactive for the good. We can win much better doing that than getting down in the muck with KV. So with that being said, that's that's the main crest. I know I ran along here, but really had some stuff to say on it. Just wanted to make some points about what you know what we've been talking about lately. So now let's get let's get to this day in Nietzsche history. There are some fun little facts here that that I I've come across that I think you guys might enjoy. So, on this date in 1950, 70 years ago, Archie Comics released on the newsstands Jughead number the 300th issue of Jughead. Archie Archie's pal Jughead um from Archie Comics. On this date in actually I'm not sorry, not not 1950, 1980. On this date in 1980, the 300th issue of Jughead um was was put out on newsstands by Archie Comics. And even to this day, I believe Archie Comics is still running because I just saw in the store the other day, I guess there was a book of a collection of Archie information. So, so on this date, 1980, um, 40 years ago, rather than as I said originally, 40 years ago, Jughead issue number 300 was released on the newsstands by Archie Comics. So moving on then to the next little. On this date in 1984, the movie The Adventures of Ganba um, the movie The Adventures, the first of two movies, The Adventures of Ganba was released on this date in 1984. It was a movie based on the anime series The Adventures of Ganba of Gamba. So that's 
So, The Adventures of Gamba, the movie was the animated movie was released on this date in 1984, based on the the 1970s Nippon TV anime of the same name. That happened on this date in 1984. Then on this date in 1989, um, Disney Channel premiered Chippendales Rescue Rangers. On this date in 1989, Chippendales Rescue Rangers made their premiere premiered on the Disney Channel on this date in 1989. Some of you might Sometimes some crimes go slipping through the cracks, but these two gum shoes are picking up the slack. There's no case too big, no case too small. When you need help, just call Cha 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 Pandale Rescue Rangers. Cha 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 Pandale Rescue Rangers. <laughs> that was a cute song. That was a fun. That was a little fun one. You know, basically taking the Chip Nail characters from from the Disney and turning them into detectives, and then adding, of course, the adventurer mon the the cheese crazed adventure Monterey Jack and the and the female inventor gadget to to the team as well. So um so yeah, Mar um so on this date, March fourth, nineteen eighty nine was the debut of Chippendale's Rescue Ranger. And also on this date in two thousand ten, um Angelo Paso the father of the late Macho Man Randy Savage, as well as Lanny Poffo, passed away on this date in 2010 at the age of 84. On this date in 2010, Angelo Poffo, the father of the late Macho Man Randy Savage and Lanny Poffo, um, passed away on this date in 2004. So with that all being said, now to finish up the video here, um, you can check the links below. If you want to contact me directly, you can direct message me on my Discord. You can join this, check out and join the Discord if you'd like. Um, also remember, I'm still promoting a bunch of different dub companies. Contrary to what they want you to believe, Funimation is not the only game in town. Um, Again, the idea of being proact, you know, being positive proact. I want to promote the other, other dub companies that don't get the attention that they deserve. Um, let's see. I'm also still promoting the GoFundMe's. Um, never feel like you have to donate. If you if you have the means to, and it's on your heart to do so, please consider donating. If you have already donated, please consider donating again. And if you cannot donate, you can still help out the cause by you can still help out the cause by um, by sharing by sharing the you know by sharing the links because you never know you know maybe somebody in your circle of friends may see it and say yeah I want to help out too sharing is caring and you never know and also if you like this content um, please consider liking commenting sharing and subscribing. I look forward to the conversation with you guys, um, as long as it's civil and respectful, of course. Um, let me see. Um, and with that, um, I hope you guys will catch this video. I know it's a long one because I had a lot to say on what just ha what's gone on the last couple of days here. Um, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.